sorry to Kevin for the introduction and thank you as well for this amazing question. Faya te kotahi tanga te wairua tēnei whare karakia wa ma te rama marie e te aroha e paere te korangi ka pakatuanuku tēnā koro ki ngā tangata whenua te whanganui ākara te ati awa, nga te toa rangatira nga tīra, e emi, e mama, e mi i tūturu e te atua e runga rawa tēnā oki koe e te kaihanga ahurea katoa ki ngā hau e whā te awa tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou tēnā koutou Ko tomo fa te tapu ki tolo tahai, o tua ko te mai ko te aru mo la ma li ma oni oni, o ne afio i hotel roto roto ngani. I like to acknowledge all of our special guests who join us tonight. Tapu ki fa ka afi fa te langi langi, ona bo Labour Member of Parliament and Rangatai Electorate, Oriku. Tapu ki Deputy Mayor Sarah Free. Tapu ki Sarah o ko ate, Mr Majora. Tapu ki Board of Governors and Alicia Kachau. Tāku kia pōrē ako lahi, headmaster, Mr. Yu. Tāku whoki heni, kia pōrē ako Mr. Zacharyson, Alan, Kirk, e moe whāko hana koto. Tāku kia tāna lahi matua, tāui whānau ni whāmi. E moe whānau ako kotoa, koe kaulisi, ma si katila ni, tāna no whā. Ka e tāna no ko aifanga mere koe ni, ke o whakahoko atu, e kulea, moe wāri kupahe wahe, paka osi, pe moe kaulisi, o ko o whāia. Te whanākia ki kōtahi mā roto i te whanau ngā tonga. Developing as one through family connection, relationships and inclusivity. This is the foundation and the vision that our college prefix, Sepa Scots College, te kāreti o kotarani for 2020. Now at the end of 2019, Cameron and I discussed possible ideas around the importance of relationships and how it acts as a conduit towards connecting as a college partner. Kāsha Marks, our Intelligent Wellbeing Prefect, proposed the co-popper of Whanaunga, our family connection. I am proud that this vision has truly been embedded throughout our Scots community. But before I reflect on both my journey and the 104 environment, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Moses Yosiwa Kaleti Mora Mafi, and I'm better known as Mosi. And if you really know me, then it's Little Toko. I'm both humbled and privileged to be the first Tongan and Kiribati head prefect of Scots College and also to be the first to lead both young men and young women of the 104. The 104 refers to the number of years since Scots was established and is the unofficial student name of this college, although Mr. Yu likes to argue that it's 105. There were many changes and challenges in 2020. The unique year number truly lived up to its name. Whether it was co-education or COVID-19, it was a lot for a coconut to handle. <laughs> See, as fast as we settled into our new learning environment, we were also forced to settle into another. For eight weeks, we studied from home, and even though our situation has improved immensely, COVID-19 has significantly affected our trips, our events, and organized plans. However, even when we are faced with challenges, this does not mean they are not blessings. I'm not going to cliche my way through my valedictory focusing on this pandemic, but what I will say is that the time away from the college allowed us to grow and enhance our character. Petrudum per doctrina, let education make your own character. Establishing all-round character means that as a college we are adaptable and resilient. This resilience meant that we were still able to host the concert when Mr. Whitehouse covered Mansell Hot and Sachin took his rapping career to another level. We hosted our first independent production of The Adams Family, which was highly successful. And for the first time in history, our first 11 football and first team rugby teams became back-to-back -back Wellington Premiership champions. Now as a college, we were able to host our local Pride Week, form a new Kotarani Haka, and celebrate a number of different cultures. Now focusing on what we can't control only leads to a lack of action. And I'm proud to say that despite the setbacks, our Scots College Whanau have continued to give nothing less than 104%. I'm a descendant of warriors, navigators, and orators. I hope to display the richness of my ancestors through my words today. My father is from the village of Apikokape in Golfo Ou, Tongatapu. And my late grandfather, Devito, was originally from Tongaleka in Hawaii. And my mother, Lucy, hails from the town of Timokin, based on town in Iribas, and she is also part Chinese. I was raised in a Christian faith, and I attended the Tongan Bible Church from a young age. Growing up, I was always a smart mouth, and my family used to tell me that I took after my uncle Kaleti. 
but ironically, that's not Mount Fazani we hear. My parents, who lived in Bonga, decided that it was best for me to be educated in New Zealand. So my auntie Ngao became a legal guardian. I grew up in the dangerous streets of Karori. <laughs> <laughs> and I always had family around me, which in a way disguised the abnormality of me living away from my parents. My siblings all attended Tonga High School, and my second eldest brother Russell completed his final year at Scott's College in 2008. My auntie always wanted the very best for me, and she saw the value of private education with a focus on character and academics. In year eight, she applied for the Aspire Scholarship for single parents and lower socioeconomic families. In September of 2015, and only through the grace of God, I was granted the Aspire Scholarship. This would be an opportunity that would change my life. Now, due to my brother's time at Scott's, I was placed in the Fano and Makani, Mackenzie House. I was fortunate enough to be led by Mr. Holmes, who was my first dean, a man who taught me all about house passion. He was then succeeded by Mr. Clayton, uh, who made a major impact in a short time. And of course, our current house dean, Mr. Cinnamon, who has the driest strokes you'll ever hear. <laughs> it was at this time I also met my day ones, Effie, JB, Cam, Billy, Jack Carter, Jack Archibald, and JT. When I first came to Scots, I was an average athlete. But after exposure to the facilities and high performance program here, I quickly realised that I had no future in sports whatsoever. <laughs> I was not a standout student by any stretch, and I wasn't able to really find myself. I played a couple sports here and there, but I really got involved in other aspects of the college. I fully committed to Cornerstone Leadership Church in 2017, where I was able to find my gift for music and the arts of speech. I started senior school the following year, and I was immediately given the opportunity to express these gifts. Nevertheless, one of my big turning points occurred during my year 12 English class. I had annoyed Miss Milne so much that she pulled me outside and told me straight, Mossy, you can either be head boy or head dick. <laughs> <laughs> Being the smart mouth that I am, I replied, both. <laughs> That's probably why Miss Milne is now teaching me at St. Mary's. <laughs> now, following that wake up call, I decided to step up, and my love for the college and what was the 103 at the time quickly flourished. I attended a number of supporters club events, I sang alongside the Strathmore singers, I joined the Māori bus speaker group and performed at Tutangata, and I even raised awareness for both White Ribbon and the Cancer Society. I travelled to Hong Kong for my church where I was given the opportunity to talk to hundreds of young people. I competed in the speech finals and I took major roles in house haka and house music. I was fortunate enough to be recognised for my college spirit and I was shortlisted for the leading prefect roles in the middle of study leave. There were several Facebook calls to Zeke Fiso, who was head prefect in 2018, and one of my church leaders, Arena Tulitua, who were both constantly ensuring I was well prepared for my interview. Miss Hall, who taught most of the boys how to read, also kept me in check, reassuring that whatever the result was, that I had her support. Now this was a stressful time, but luckily I had my Uber driver, Joseph Stewart, who always pulled through, despite only being on his learners. <laughs> Sunday, the 24th of November. Sunday, 24th of November at 9.16 a.m. It seemed that my interview had gone better than expected. And while I'm on my way to church, an unlisted number popped up on my phone. Assuming as one of the boys, I picked it up and yelled, Yo! And I was met with a, Good morning, Moses. It's Mr. Yo. <laughs> ah, the feeling of embarrassment. Mr. Yo asked me whether I'd be willing to undertake the role as head of college. And nearly in tears, I accepted. From that very moment, my life had changed once again. And it seemed that every sacrifice my family had made, and the prayers that my nana said for me every night, had been answered. Now, despite the fact that I wasn't good at sports and didn't fit the stereotypical Bastika student at Scots, I was able to enhance my unique gifts and develop the all character. If there was one key message that I gained throughout the past five years, it is to stop comparing and to be yourself. The more time you spend trying to be like others, is time wasted. Find your gifts, find your passions, and enhance them. It is never an easy road going against the social norm. But personally, I'd rather be myself and let others mock than be someone else and not be true to my identity. Now my faith is at the forefront of everything that I do, so all glory must go to the Heavenly Father who has given me the gift and opportunity to lead the one and four. My support network has been my rock and my foundation. So tonight, I'd like to acknowledge these particular groups and individuals that have contributed to my journey.
First of all, to the leaders and members of Cornerstone Leadership Church. To Sarah, Arena, Johnny and Annie, as well as every member of our small family, thank you for contributing to the development of my faith and character. To our headmaster, Mr. Yu, you have been so supportive of, of our Fanonga Tonga vision. Thank you for guiding me through this role and teaching me so many key leadership lessons. Mr. Zacharyson, your decisiveness and support of both Hamish and I is commendable, to say the least. Thank you to Maria Calcott, who keeps me organized and always keeps this college in one piece. And to Ms. Gibbs, your pastoral care amongst our young women of the college is truly appreciated. To Mr. Lavrock, I want to personally honor you. Your character and your words of wisdom always bring me comfort. Mr. Allen and Mr. Kirk, middle and prep school principals, thank you also for your total. My Mackenzie family, Te Whanau Makanihi, my tutor Mr. Connell, head of house AP, and my dean Mr. Cinnamon, thank you for reinstilling the magic each week. Mr. Cinnamon, it has been nothing short of a privilege to have such a supportive dean like yourself. To all the Gip House staff, particularly Mr. Henry Smith, Ama, Vienna, Coxie, the giant, dynamic duo of Ronnie and Louisa, it has been a blessing spending my final moments with you. To all the staff who have contributed and supported me through my time at the 104, I thank you. Leslie, OC, Milne, Tanavasa, Hall, Shudders, Managiri, Bondet, Griffiths, Chaplain Mr. Jackson, and the librarians are just some of the few who have made a significant impact in my life. To Mr. Scott Swanson, you've educated me beyond this history. <coughs> to Nurse Joe and Councillor Jackie Calder, you both have such a heart for every single student that walks into your offices. And for that, I have the deepest respect. I've also got to show love to my band of brothers, thanks to the leaders who came today. I speak against COVID-19 and the classification office youth advisory panel. Thank you for providing me the platform to speak on issues that surround our people and also encourage them. To my Samoa parents, Tofinga and Bessie Fekoriai, one makes me laugh, another makes me cry. <laughs> you always know the right things to say and you are constantly pushing for our bus speaker voices to be heard. I've got nothing but love for you and your family. Now I've said my piece uh, last week at our leaders event, but the Tasnofa Māori bus speaker group will always hold a very special place in my heart. To Mato Emerson, Ms. Marquez, Bruce Cox, and Tilly, thank you for putting up with us. And to Mr. Seal, thank you for encouraging me to be myself and to be proud of my ancestry. I'll miss you all. To my brothers and kilts, you should all be immensely proud of what you have achieved and also your contribution to our college's success. You don't know what to. My red haired Bakuwa, my neighbour, and the one who tells me to turn down my music at 9 pm so he can get his beauty sleep. My prospect, Hamish Kevin. <laughs> if I didn't have Hamish Kevin alongside me, I wouldn't have been able to lead the 104 in the same way. Kevin, you have taught me so much, and although we don't do science together, we do have quite the chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget the first time I met you at EATC camp, and when we were all sharing about things that uh, people may not know about us, the first thing you told us was that you low key hate everyone. <laughs> now, working alongside you this year has truly been a heartwarming experience. I know we never say it, but I love you, brother. 676 to the 685, I want to fall on my chest to the day I die. So my one and four tapusas, you know who you are. We have starved together, and tonight we eat. Considering that you all love Scott so much, I'm sure some of you will be repeating next year. Tapu family, doing the buffet, there, shots, kanki, and more of my families. To my auntie and uncles who have raised me, fed me, and ensured I was given every opportunity to succeed. Kamrabwa, Marwa Beto. To my little cousins Joseph and Elizabeth, continue to shine your light. To my siblings Muffy, Russ and Candy, aka my internet banking best friends, <laughs> thank you for always giving me the advice I need and keeping me grounded. To my parents all the way in the Kingdom of Tonga, I hope you're watching right now and you can be somewhat proud of what the baby of the family has achieved. Marwa Beto Papa for teaching me to never look down at anyone but to never let anyone look down at me. And to Mama, thanks for always reminding me that girlfriends are a waste of time until I graduate from university. <laughs> <laughs> my auntie and pastor Pakalelo Moramafi, you have been my counselor, my mentor, and sadly my Uber for several years now. You always make time 
you always make time to talk to me, and you continue to challenge me in my leadership and faith. Thank you for sharpening my error. Kaya ko kuif hine, ko kasa nita lupe ewa, ayo na fa ilo pe, ko lupe sektor. Kaya mo ui, pe amo e ulu, e family. Talo ho, tau i mai au, me ko kei pe pe, ko kei hoko pe, ko hoku whakaloto lahi, ke ko mo ui. Ko whaka hiwa hiwa, mo ho ofa he rotu, mo e lolo sokeleti, ko o ngahi ulo, nga na iya, ko ku whaka ngano na ta. To all my late grandparents watching from above, thank you also. I wish you were here to celebrate. Can I please invite my auntie and my mom to come up on stage? <laughs> this one, very pious and tissues. Jokes like the t, incorrects, and the hated that. 
turn it up and add up and all our other laughs. We started this journey in 2016. Now in 2020, we leave our mark. Our mark embedded in our college bricks, bound by cement. Our hearts which have been filled to, filled to its full extent. As this is my final address, to my brothers and sisters and the future generations of Scots College, continue, continue to give you 104%. Ngā iatu kia ki mau tau an katoa. Leva leva ai mā nanga kai tau atu. God bless the wonderful.